through three hours of the regular show on Terrestrial Radio, and you wanted a little bit more, so that's why you found the Gun Talk After Show podcast, where we saved all the best things that we can't say on regular radio. Now, here's Tom, Michelle, and Jim for the Gun Talk After Show. All right, it's the After Show, where we have Jim and Michelle with us. Hello, guys. Hello. What was your name again? It's been a while. I know. Okay, we're... <laughs> No kidding. We haven't done after show for th- two weeks. Yeah, two or like three that. weeks, yeah. yeah it's been because uh, of both the NRA shows. When we did uh, shows from the NRA, we didn't mm-hmm. do that. So it's nice to be back. By the way, happy Mother's Day, Michelle. Thank you, sir. I appreciate yeah. that. And to all so, those moms out there. It's mm-hmm. nice of you to come in to work on Mother's Day. <laughs> Gave me a break from the house cleaning. Oh, okay. <laughs> Boy, that's some Mother's Day you have, right? man. <laughs> Good grief. And, oh. and a happy Mother's Day to some of those single dads that are doing double duty. It's true. Oh, the heck with them. That's okay. Yeah, just <laughs> suck yeah, it up. That's you know? Father's Day. That's in Quit. June. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Quit, <laughs> Quit your bitch and just suck it up. Whatever. <laughs> oh. <laughs> God. So I did like our... Uh, our guest, uh, Blake Miguez, our legislator, who had shot a thousand rounds this morning in practice before he uh, got on the radio with us. <laughs> that's pretty that's funny. A, that's a fun legislator yeah. right there. He's <laughs> calling, his, calling us as he's cleaning his gun. That's great. Yes, exactly. <laughs> going, you know, you're interrupting my gun cleaning here to talk about guns. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Works for me. We got two uh, other two other folks that want to talk about guns apparently here. Let's do that. Start with Jim. He's uh, out of Wichita, Kansas on three. Hey, Jim, thank you for your patience. Uh, you made it into the after show. Well, I'm glad about that. Hey, listen, it, it, it's getting to sound like the board on the NRA is, is they're, they're just prime members of the swamp out of D.C. Uh, mm. they're, they're all starting to sound like the damn politicians. You but, know, I, I've hey, heard several people compare them to the swamp. I mean, that use that same analogy, so I know what you're talking about. Well, okay. As near as I can tell, and from past history, I think Ollie North was probably an honorable guy. And if he left, you know, to go back home, and he's still a member of the board, I guess, is what you were saying. Yes, he is. Well, he needs to get get with the, the members out here, the, the, the people in the flyover country out here, the guys that support him, and tell us exactly what's what, and and tell us how we can get rid of those guys that are that are screwing everything up. And if LaPierre is making, making that kind of money, hey, <laughs> They've seen the last of my wallet for a good long time. I'm, I'm only an, uh, an annual member, and they have to depend on me to, to re-up my in, uh, membership every year. Mm-hmm. And that's not going to happen until LaPierre starts making normal wages. Well, I, I will say this. Now, yes, I think there have been insane excesses. Now, when it comes to straight-up uh, salary, when you have a $250 million a year corporation, it's not unusual to pay somebody a million bucks a year to run an organization that size. That's actually kind of the going rate. That's, that part, actually, weirdly enough, doesn't bother me. His salary doesn't bother me. It's all the other stuff, the the private planes, the charters, the expenses, the payments to board members. The uh, it, 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 We don't have a clue how deep this goes. I think it, we're going to find out there's a whole lot more going on here. Um, but, you know, it's weird. Of, of all the things, his salary doesn't bother me as much as the, you know, uh, quarter of a million bucks for suits. That's kind of excessive, I think. I mean, I'm not a clothes horse, but good grief. Well, mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, you, you, suppose all he know, you suppose the reason Ollie North left was because he was beginning to see all this stuff? You know, I would love to be, I'm going to issue the invitation. If I can find a an avenue to get a message to him to say, if he wants to talk, I'm here. My Roger guess that. is that, I don't know if he can. I don't know if there are legal things going on. I, I assume there are. I mean, these guys were paying outside lawyer 20 million bucks, I think it was, something like that. And then LaPierre summarily dismisses the outside counsel. Without the action of the board or anything else, a few days before the NRA annual meetings, um, nobody seems to understand or know what that was about. There's, there's a weird big question mark going on there. What, yeah. you know, what was happening there? Uh, I mean, I don't want to put too much of a uh, sinister spin on the whole thing, but just every time you pull back the covers a little bit more, you get more questions rather than answers. Yeah, well. Okay. I, I just want them to fix it. I want my NRA to be functional. 
I want it to be effective. I want it to represent us. I want it to protect the Second Amendment. And I don't want to be sending $40 million a year to a PR agency, which is what we've been doing. Roger that. I agree with you 100%. Thanks, Jim. I appreciate that, sir. Let's just uh, go down to Tony on five. He's out of Chandler, Arizona. Man, I have landed at the Chandler Airport a number of times, Tony. Tom, how you doing? I'm good. Uh, happy Mother's Day to, to all your moms, and, um, you know, thanks for being here. And I can't believe I made it on the after show. My life is complete now. <laughs> I know who you are. We, we uh, have yes. shared a meal together, haven't we? Many times, Tom, yes. Yes, we have. Now I put it together. Okay. <laughs> Um, Tom, so I just wanted to uh, comment briefly on this whole NRA debacle. And um, first of all, let me let me say just how completely disheartening it is. Um, you hey, know, Tony. Because hey, Tony. It, you want, yes. do you want to tell them who you are and what your background is? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm the former president of the California Rifle and Pistol Association, which is uh, the largest state affiliate for the um, for the NRA. And um, uh, I, I have been to many board meetings on the inside. Um, I, I know Chris Cox and, and LaPierre Wayne uh, fairly well. Uh, many, uh, many of the board members, current board members, are, are friends of mine personally. Mm-hmm. Um, and I couldn't make Indianapolis. Um, I was in Dallas last year and uh, SHOT Show, um, and I will definitely be in Nashville ne- next year. Mm-hmm. Um, so... I kind of have a little bit of intimate knowledge of of the NRA, and and let me say up front that you know um, great people for the most part, the vast majority of of NRA people are dedicated to the, right. to the Second Amendment, and they're doing the right thing. Um, this may just be a case of you know absolute power corrupts absolutely. Mm-hmm. I I don't know. Um, but I, it's extremely disheartening, um, and, it, it, you know, we're about to enter a very, very tough election season, and we absolutely need a strong, sound NRA now more than ever. Yep. Um, and it just, it, the timing could not be worse. Here's the thing. It, we, a, a lot of the state groups, kind of the, kind of, kind of the inside joke in terms of the NRA and the NRA leadership and the executive board, was, it was kind of like the Politburo of the old Soviet days, you know. Um, everything was very tightly controlled, and the NRA is an absolutely ruthless organization. They are absolutely ruthless, but they get things done. I mean, there has never been a time where we've had the president and the vice president of the United States show up to three NRA annual meetings three years in a row. That's just yeah, never amazing. happened before. Amazing, yes. You know, so what they have been able to accomplish is incredible. Hopefully, it will continue. Um, but I, I got to tell you, it's just absolutely disheartening, and I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it's not as bad as everybody says. But I just, you know, it's one of those cases where you you hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Well, you know, Tony, but the bottom line is, you are, you are absolutely right. There's nobody else that can step into that role right now. There's no. there's no organization that's strong enough or that has the clout or the resources or the connections. You know, my hope is that at least Chris Cox and, and NRA Isla will come out of this relatively unscathed. Yes. Yeah, because and, and they, so, they are separate. So far, I'm not seeing him linked to any of this stuff, and I'm hoping against hope that that is the case. But here's the deal. And you, you said, and because you've got the, a lot of history, you've got inside knowledge, and you said you hope it's not as bad as it looks like it is, and yet I'm betting that you feel the same way I do, which is we probably have not seen it all yet. Um, yeah, probably not. But, you know, here again, as I said, um, just w- what I know, having having dealt with the NRA kind of on the inside to a certain extent, mm-hmm. they are a ruthless organization. And you know, if you're if you're on their good side, um, there's you know, it's kind of like the uh, um, uh, the saying that the old that the first Marine Division used to have. You know, um, no no better friend, no worse enemy. That's pretty much. Um, how the NRA is. I mean, if, if God knows they did so much to help out California and everything that's still going on in California, um, and they treated us extremely well, and probably things would be a lot worse were it not for them. Um, so I have nothing but respect for the NRA and what it does and its mission. And like I said, there are some very dedicated, very talented members of the board of directors, um, and I'm hoping that 
somebody steps up and does the right thing, and it, here's, they're accountable to the members. That's the bottom line. They're accountable to the members. The problem is, is that when you cut off communication to the members and you're not honest and transparent with the members, then you have what we have now where rumors are running rampant and nobody really knows what's going on unless you're you know, intimately involved. You and that's trust. just a very unhealthy place to be. You lose the trust of the members and you cannot exactly. have Exactly. Absolutely, yeah. You can't. I mean, I want more than anything to have a good, strong, effective NRA. I want my NRA to be good. I am angry that it's going to be weaker because of what these people have been doing. That, 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 you know, at the, at the bottom line, that's what really bothers me. Yeah, okay, I can get upset about people who are wasting money or, or taking money or I don't want to say stealing because that's a whole different deal. Uh, yeah. But, but at the same time, what, I, I can be upset by that. I can be disappointed by that. But I'm angry that they are damaging our Second Amendment stalwart group that is there, that is our front line, that is our wall, that is that we need so strongly. It just angers me that whomever it is, what group, what individuals have done this, and I want the board of directors to take control of it and to do, as you say, it's time for them to be ruthless. You know, there's an old line that I love in business, which is, the question is, you know, you know when the best time to fire someone is? And the answer is the first time you think about it. If you have the thought that you need to, you need to. And it's been way overdue. And I don't know who's on the list, but it's not one. There's more than one on the list. Well, the other, the other, the other part to this that, kind of, that concerns me above anything else is that, I mean, not only have, has the NRA and, and its 5 million members have we been right on the issues in terms of the NRA and, and the Second Amendment and everything that we've been espousing for a year in terms of or years for in terms of responsible gun ownership? Mm-hmm. But we've also been a very moral organization, and this is a very yes. decent, good sport that's filled with very decent, moral people who do the right thing. And we've always come from that perspective in addition to always being right on the issues. So when you kind of lose some of the moral high ground and there's a tinge of corruption, um, that just undercuts every other argument because now it gives, you know, the the AG in New York and God knows who else is sharpening the long knives right now. They're just like, well, you know, we always knew that gun owners were were corrupt. There's no mystery here. So there's a Mm -hmm. whole other component to this that it just, it's, it's just disheartening. It's, it couldn't have come at a worse time. And damn it, I hope they get it figured out and clean it up quick. Yeah, when you say they're ruthless, you're not kidding. And I have felt it before. I expect to, after this show today, I expect to feel it again. Tony, thank you for what you do, what you have done. Thank you for being there for the Second Amendment. Uh, I've stood shoulder to shoulder with you literally uh, in fighting for this. And we will get through this. It's just going to be an ugly chapter. But at the end of it, we're going to have a good, strong NRA, and we're going to be effective. It's just, as you say, it couldn't come at a worse time, man. I, I, I sure, I, I'm sure you're right, and uh, you know the bottom line is the strength of the NRA and other organization is, is its members, and, and our membership is strong, filled with very good, dedicated people, and they will drive the outcome one way or another. The members will drive the outcome, and I'm, uh, I have no doubt it'll be positive. So I look forward to seeing you in uh, Phoenix in a couple months for um, for the uh, gun rights policy conference. You bet. We will see you there, and, man. Uh, it, w- it was great talking to you, and thank you for giving me the time, and uh, um, I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate that. Hey, guys, let's take a quick break here. We'll come back, and uh, we've got some other things to talk about. We'll be back in just a sec. Whether you are a first-timer or seasoned shooter, Double Star has the guns, edged weapons, and parts you desire. Our products are made in America and held to the highest quality standards. No exceptions. Double Star and Ace Limited manufactures products people bet their lives on without hesitation. That awesome responsibility motivates the Double Star family, and it will proudly protect yours. When you're ready for the best, join our family at star15.com. That's star15.com. Are you tired of leather holsters not holding up to everyday carry or having boxes of holsters for every gun? 
Try a holster from 1791 Gun Leather. Offering multi-fit IWB and OWB options, every holster is handcrafted from full grain, American heavy native steer hide. Order now and enjoy unmatched quality, versatility, and that pleasant leather aroma. Go to 1791GunLeather.com for an affordable, distinctive holster that'll last a lifetime. All right, back with you here. It is uh, the crazy after show. We uh, talk about this and that, and but mostly we talk about the other thing, whatever that other thing is. <laughs> <laughs> that clears things right up. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, no matter what it is we're supposed to be talking about, we rarely land on that. Right, right. I don't know what that's about. Yeah, I, I was really glad to get Tony's call because this is a very well-respected guy, the former president of the California Rifle and Pistol Association, uh, insider at the NRA. Yeah, he's got the same feeling I do, which is just disappointment. It's just heartening. It's, you know, come on, guys. It's just like you just want to say, come on, guys. Do do whatever you got to do. Make this right. We cannot be going through this thing right now. And he expressed the same sentiment that I have. Like, really? Now? We're, we're in the worst battle that we could possibly be in politically. Right. And now this is the time that this is going to break apart? Yeah, well, yeah. it also didn't just start now either. No. Well, no, it, 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 right. It just, you know. And, you know, honestly, uh, the reason this is out is because Bloomberg hired all these investigative reporters and mm-hmm. they dug and dug and dug and dug. And as I say, that would be a non starter. It wouldn't matter if there wasn't something for him to dig, but now this stuff's out. Well, we'll see. I don't, you know, I, I beat this to death. And yes, he's right about the NRA being ruthless. And yes, I have felt that before here. And I expect to have the. Uh, the results of that, uh, they just don't like anybody who says anything negative about them. So there you go. Anyway, uh, having said all of that, let's see. Uh, let's see. I told you about the 10 millimeter Springfield Armory. Mm-hmm. I think I mentioned that. Mm-hmm. So been, and then I bought my little 28 gauge over and under, and I have not had a chance to shoot it. I was going to take it out and shoot it yesterday, but I didn't feel that it would be that effective with those light loads with in the middle of the tornadoes. Oh. Yeah, and that flash can, floods. Can so put a little damper on things. Sure, I probably should have used a twelve gauge. You know, but anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, we've we've had monster storms and lightning and thunder and tornadoes and all the rest of it. So it's like welcome to spring. Yeah, no doubt. Eh, well, it's okay. Still beats winter. Yeah, I'm not having to shovel anything. So there you go. Yeah, and the twelve feet of snow we had uh, in Idaho. True. Past, boy, I mean, literally twelve feet of snowfall. Man, man, that's too much. Too much. <laughs> Good grief. I did like uh, when Jeff was uh, Jeff Hoffman, Black Hills, was talking about uh, ammo and temperatures, something that people don't think about. Back in the old days, we always told people when you work up your loads, if you're going to be hunting in like really cold weather, if you work up your loads in the middle of the summer and it's hot, you're going to get really different performance and you have to check, get them sighted in again before you go. With modern powders, that's not the case so much. So that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. So the, the correction is to just recite. It's not just to change your formula back in the day. Generally, what you would do is you would go, say you lived in Arizona, and you worked up your loads in August, September, October, even November. It's just hotter than I'll get out. But probably in you know August, September, and it's just mm-hmm. 100 degrees. Unbearable, right. And then you're going to go to Colorado, and it's 30 degrees. You can't really work up new loads if you're going to elk camp. But what you can do is shoot a couple of times mm-hmm. and check where it's hitting. Generally, what's going to happen is you'll get maybe a little bit of a drop in point of impact because the chemical reaction is slower because mm-hmm. it's colder. Mm-hmm. Now, what can happen, the opposite of that can get real ugly, is if you work up maximum loads in the winter mm. going for the prairie dog season, for instance, and it's 30 degrees, 20 degrees when you're out shooting and then you go out and it's 95 degrees to shoot prairie dogs, you could end up with some seriously high pressures. I was going to say, are you over Sammy spec at that point? You are well over Sammy spec. Yes, you are. So it's just one of those things. And that's still a factor. I mean, anybody who's hand loading has to take that into account. Factory ammo allows for that. It will not, and they test at high temperature, low temperature. And so it's not going to be unsafe. It could get performance difference still, but not. you could get performance differences. And you, you know, if you, you know, if you sighted in, it was 100 degrees, and you're going to go hunt, and it's minus 20, and you're in Saskatchewan, which it actually can be. People do a, a lot of uh, whitetail deer hunting. And it's 
literally minus 20. Uh, you might want to sight that gun in again just to see where it's shooting. You don't just say, aim high, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. Did I? I can't remember. Was I telling you on the show, Jim, or was it before the show about that? No, it was. I, it was uh, another guy. I didn't, didn't tell you about the streak ammo we used this week. No, no, you didn't. Oh, streak ammo. Holding back info on me again, Tom? Yes, yes. This Great. is so cool. Uh, Michelle may have heard of this. It's uh, basically it's the new tracer ammo. Yep, we we actually have it in our store. Oh, nice. Yeah. You're always in I, well. You know, try to be on the cutting edge. You are. You're out there. <laughs> it's cool stuff. We had uh, Mark Hannish in from uh, Ammo Inc. It's a company that has it. Mm-hmm. The base of the bullet has. This is not going to be correct, but it's got like a they call it a stick-on patch. It's not really, but it's got something on the base of the bullet that you can shine a flashlight on it for like a second, and it will glow. It glows red. So when you fire the gun, the flash of the powder lights up the back end of the bullet, and it only glows for a second or so, but that's more than enough to get it the whole distance that you're shooting, and it looks like tracers going down range, but there's no uh, fire or incendiary. Oh, there's no incendiary issues. aspect. Yeah. yeah. That's always been the problem with Trace rounds is well, especially for indoor forest ranges, fires and stuff. Like you yeah. got Michelle, right? Right. I mean, you can't have tracers going off in there. You set no. fire to the whole place. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> too a little too much excessive powder on the yeah. Yeah, there's uh, for those who don't know, there's always unburned powder mm-hmm. on the floors and the walls of indoor shooting ranges, and you clean it the best you can. And it's right. one of the reasons you really have to have a rigid cleaning mm-hmm. schedule because mm-hmm. uh, there are some videos out there of indoor ranges catching fire and it is frightening incorrect chemicals i was oh. gonna say yeah uh, they're, they're chemicals <laughs> that can neutralize the uh, yep that's yeah. exactly what happens it neutralizes it mm-hmm. uh, okay so it's so. residual yeah okay but you could shoot these in your range couldn't you mm-hmm. have you done it i have not no oh you gotta go do it it's so much fun yeah indoor it needs to be fairly low light indoor ranges mm-hmm. are fine outside in the daylight they won't show up. I watched their uh, video that they had uh, uh-huh. online, which was pretty cool. I think they were shooting it out of a uh, Ruger PC9, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty. It was, and they were under, it was dark, and they mm-hmm. just, that's exactly what they did. They put a production light on it for a bit and shot. It was, yeah. it was cool. It's really something. So, I mean, you shoot this, and, you know, we say, okay, what's it for? Well, it's cool, for one thing. But the other thing is, they said, you know, it's kind of interesting, but if you say you were in a self-defense situation, mm-hmm. well, two things. One, they said well, for training, if you have a trainer with you, the trainer can watch where the bullets are going without even having to look at the target and tell you what you're doing and make corrections on the spot. Uh, the other one was self-defense situation. You can't see the sights mm-hmm. or you just miss. Well, if you don't have any feedback, you just keep shooting and hoping that you're hitting. But if you see the bullet go to the side, you are going to automatically, without a thought, make a correction. You can actually see where that first one went. You're just going to correct right into where it needs to be. Mm. Interesting, huh? It's cool. Yeah. And you I, to play with cool t- things. Yeah. Man. And and they do, for those of you who want to know, they have it in hollow point and full metal jacket. Ah, yes. In practice ammo and in defensive ammo. Mm-hmm. Yes, they do. We shot... Oh, and the newest thing is they have it in hollow point frangible. Right. Which is pretty cool. L- low penetration in self defense situations. Wow, what a combo that would be. Mm-hmm. Streak ammo with a laser. You'd have streaking all over the place. You'd continue to rejuvenate its streakingness as it goes down range. Oh, I see. You could charge up the light in it as it goes way down yeah. range. It's funny. They said, yeah, we've had people say, well, you know, so how far down range will it glow? I said, well, I don't know. I mean, we've shot it in rifles, and it's like two or 300 yards. But, you know, it still only takes, what, a quarter of a second for it to get 300 or 400 yards? Right. <laughs> right. It's like, right. okay. I mean, I don't know how long it glows, but who cares? You know, it's already at it's the target done. by the time. <laughs> It's well, done. so we can find them and reload. <laughs> don't, well, don't reload the like projectiles. We, you we ask, uh, sometimes we'll ask these industry guys. Uh, it's kind of like working behind the counter, Michelle, where we ask, well, at trade shows and all, what are some of the dumbest questions you got? And they all roll their oh, eyes. Oh, boy. <laughs> then we get that a lot, too. The oh, boy. <laughs> Good. Right. I said, yeah. One guy says, yeah, we had a guy ask me, he says, well, if I look down the barrel and I pull the trigger, will I be able to see the bullet coming? <laughs> Wow. Once. What? what? No one's ever you, actually reported back on yeah, that. You won't comprehend it. <laughs> we don't know yet. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
Uh, That's funny because we tell people there are no stupid questions. Then we make fun of people that ask stupid questions. Actually, there are stupid questions. questions. There are. The only stupid, you know, it's stupid to say there are no stupid questions. Yes, there are. <laughs> you know, you just go, okay. You know, if you're asking a real question, then I'm not going to make fun of you. But yes, there are. I mean, yes. come on, Michelle, you know. <laughs> so you're this recommending stuff. we don't start with, not to ask a stupid question or anything, but. <laughs> yeah, just don't preface it with that and you're good to go. Okay. Oh. Well, or I like when they say start off with, "Well, this may be a dumb question, but then I, don't ask. Don't ask. Just come on. No, no it's okay. I mean, no, ask, there's no ask such questions, thing. Go ahead. Of course. Yes. Yeah, it's okay. That's right. But it is. Weird. No, you're right, Jerry. That was a stupid question. Yeah, it's okay. It, it's all right. It's okay. We're not going to make fun of you too much until you leave. <laughs> the minute you're here's, out that door, here's a picture of this guy. We're gonna put it on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think gun stores should have a uh, like a whiteboard in the back where you kind of have a, a list of the best ones. Yeah, and when you see the customer walk in, and, uh, walk in, and all it automatically delegates the new salesman to take care of them. I'm just thinking about the best questions you get, just yeah. the stuff you get. You know, and uh, you also get these stories. People want to tell you stories of things that are, from a physics standpoint, impossible. You know, it's like. Uh, the guy who said, you know, we just hold right on out to, th- out to 800 yards with a 308 because they, they shoot flat. They don't drop at all. <laughs> Ever. Mm, no. <laughs> Spe- oh, 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 oh. Speaking of long-range shooting, I just saw something somewhere about somebody we know setting a record in shooting. Hmm. Wasn't me. You know wasn't about? you. Wasn't Michelle. Well, well I might. Yeah, what what happened here? So my son, who, for those of you who may know or may not know, is a member of the U.S. Army Marksmanship Unit. And last year at the CMP Cup, which is travel games, what they call travel games, they move across the country and the Army's discipline, they put out a... uh, a SAF school, a small arms firing school. And then they teach people how to shoot, go out there, shoot with them. And then everybody gets together afterwards and they do their three days of competition for the CMP, which is um, just a regular, what we call it a, a regular leg match. But mm-hmm. so my son last year set yeah. a record at the CMP Eastern Cup and then went on to at Camp Perry, shoot a new record and winning the service high power matches. Woohoo! I don't know. And so. There's no one proud in that family. <laughs> No. Oh, and very humble. I mean, you know, my 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 son is very humble, and as parents, you talk yeah, about what I'm your think, kids I'm did. I'm thinking about the mom here, <laughs> right? <laughs> so this year, CMP matches came around with the Eastern Cup, and my son in one match not only broke his record that he set at the CMP matches, he also broke his record that he won the high power championship with. Wow. Yeah. It he it was absolutely incredible. He dropped a total of 11 points. Wow. Yeah. And now, Ben, right? Yep, Ben is Cleland. Has Ben a sergeant? Yes, he is a sergeant. Yep. Okay, so Sergeant Ben Cleland, if you happen to run into him, <laughs> yep. can offer a congratulations and a thanks for his service yeah. as well. I think it's Thank really you. cool that they renamed it. They didn't have to change the logo or anything. It's now called the Cleland Marksmanship Program. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so just keep all those <laughs> logos, everything stayed the same. He's, he's very well aware of what his unit does to build one another up and the people they have in the arms room to keep them going and mm. and mm-hmm. and all that but you know I really feel that they push our industry to be better and and you know they need the ability to have good shooting rifles and scopes and everything That's that right. goes along with every, it every every aspect of it the scopes the the sights the ammo the rifles the yep. barrels the bullets, logistics, the logistics the every part of it has to be better all the time because our shooters are getting better all the time right and for those of you who think okay what does this have to do with the military well they are responsible for teaching the military marksmanship skills and this does make the military perform better sure oh so. yeah they, i mean and they work with all aspects of the military from kind of the 
the basic folks who are teaching people to shoot to the special yep. forces guys that were, look, here are some things that, you know, we may not be special forces and have your tactics, but we can teach you how to shoot better. Right. Mm-hmm. Drill sergeants it's, on up. It's kind of yeah. like the NASCAR of military in a way where they you know, mm-hmm. try different things and sure. trial and error and find something that works. Right. And That's what competition down. does in right. everything, doesn't it? Right. Well, yeah, it's, it's PR. It, it's the time that the civilians can take advantage of the fact that they have the top of the the line with the shooters and instructors to come in and learn something from them. They're they're completely hands on. They give so much information, uh, technique, just everything. So thank you, Tom. <laughs> but yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's that's incredible. cool. That's very cool. Okay, so last week, this past week, I'm with uh, Julie Gollum for a whole week. No, oh, yeah, day, whole day. Of course, <laughs> Julie, professional shooter, uh, shoots for Smith and Wesson on the staff there, but also former Army Marksmanship Unit yeah. member. Yep. And we're talking about these matches she's going to and all this stuff. And I asked her, I said, you know, when you were a little girl, were you competitive? She says, oh, yes. <laughs> I was the most competitive person you ever saw. She says, now, my, I think it was her sister. said, but sister, no, nah, it's okay. I don't care. She says, but I wanted to beat everybody in everything, no matter what it was. And I said, you know, I think you're born that way. I don't think you can make somebody that way. So the question is, was Ben competitive? Yes, He's yeah. always been competitive. Uh-huh. Yeah, but see, he yeah. doesn't strike me as the kind of guy that's always trying to beat anybody else. He's trying to be the best he can be. Right. Which, in turn, yeah, beats other no, people. No, no, no. He's trying to be the best he can be so he can beat everybody else. Okay. <laughs> that works. Well, that works. He, he does all he can, and this is a perfect fit because he was in the archery world before, and some people know him from, you know, being on the U.S. men's archery team. And he's always done the best that he can to get the trade out there or to get the education out there and try to to help somebody else. But, you know, just like Chad and I being a competitor, at the end of the day, we're competing against maybe you, Jim. I'm there to beat you. Right. But we're best friends. Right. Yeah, you know. Well, look, you, well I wouldn't go that far. Best well, it's true. What's well, like when, uh, <laughs> when I was with uh, Jerry Mitchell and several shooters, we took uh, a bunch of practical shooters to the uh, Olympic Training Center and had them try Olympic uh, handgun shooting. And they had a, a fun day and all. And then Jerry came in. We were actually doing the radio show from there. You know, I mean, everybody knows Jerry Mitchell. Look, and he comes in. He's all grumpy and all. I'm thinking, well, what's going on? <laughs> and I says, what happened? He says, well, I was doing great. And then, you know, I dropped a, a target, you know, the last one. I said, well, you know, this is just a demo, you know, experience thing. It's not like you're trying to beat everybody. And he stopped. He looked at me. He's like, what are you talking about? He's like, always, he says, yeah. you don't understand. I want to beat them at everything. I don't care if it's pitching pennies or racing shopping carts. I want to beat them always. <laughs> and that's when I realized these folks are different. But they, too, share their knowledge. They'll teach oh, you how to do. how to place a good shot. Well, they, well, they, they want to win right fair. around yeah. and help his competitor be better. Yeah. He says, but I still want to beat your brains out. You know, it's like, yeah, we're good buddies here. And yeah, you can borrow my gear. It's all cool. But I'm still going to try to beat you. Right. Well, that's like Ben. If somebody beats his record and he's there, he'll be the first one to shake their hand. Oh, absolutely. I mean, of course. And, and, and he's very humbled by this. You know, I mean, really, it, it is on our side. It, it's an awesome thing. You know, he shot a 2400 match and he shot a, a 2389 with 133 X's. I mean, come on. Holy cow. <laughs> Is that the best he could do? <laughs> that, that, come on. I don't oh. think you could actually do that by clamping the rifle into a vice. Just, yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, actually, I know you couldn't because you wouldn't, he wouldn't be able to take care of the wind. So there's <laughs> no. that, right? But, you know, it, it's it's early in the year and it's, and it's hard to say what's going to happen from here. But yeah, you That's know. pretty cool there, yep. Mom. It is. Cool. Well, well we're there's a happy Mother's Day story for you. Well, yeah. thanks. And while we're on break here, I'm going to work on a design for a wind compensating vice. <laughs> oh, boy. Mm. Yeah, you just put it up really, really close to the target. <laughs> See, there you go. There you go. <laughs> All right, be right back. Hey, this is Marty Daniel of Daniel Defense. For years, we've been bringing the highest quality ARs to our consumers at a great value. Now we're doing that same thing again with our Delta 5 bolt action rifle. It combines the accuracy and durability we're known for with the modularity of our AR platform. And it comes with the features the best shooters will want right out of the box. Visit DanielDefense.com to learn more. Isn't it time you got a Daniel? 
Taking the striker-fired category by storm, the CZP-10 delivers what most in the genre cannot. From the superb trigger to the purpose-driven features to the engineered ergonomics, the CZP-10 is the complete package right out of the box. With 12 plus 1 capacity in the P-10S, 15 plus 1 in the PC-10, and 19 plus 1 in the P-10F, there's a P-10 for every purpose. For more information, please visit cz-usa.com. Well, you couldn't get rid of us. We're back. (laughs) (laughs) See, you thought we were all going to leave, didn't you? Mm, No. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. That's a great story about Ben, though. I love it. Sergeant Ben Cleveland. Very cool. So, is he like, how long is he going to be in? Is he like one of those lifers or is have a plan? What are you going to do? Well, this last August, he re-enlisted and, and promised another six years to the okay. uh, to mm-hmm. the military. So cool. he's got those to go. And, and I would imagine if, you know, everything works out right and he's able to do what he needs to do for the unit, that he'll probably retire from that. It's mm-hmm. it's it's a passion that he has. You know, right. he it's a big desire. And, and it's the best of both worlds. Soldiering in our family means yeah. a lot. Yeah, I mean, as I say, this is a family uh, business, the soldier business. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep, yeah. absolutely. So that's pretty so. cool. It really is. But if I could, on Mother's Day, encourage other moms out there to get their kids involved in these sports, you would not regret what comes through this. I mean, the amount of focus and self-discipline and respect for yourself as a person and, you know, the people that you might be competing against is unlike anything else. I mean, I know there's lots of other sports out there. This can be both a team and an individual sport. And I just want to say, if you can't do it, you know, get somebody, if you have to hire somebody or go to your local club and, and get somebody to mentor your child and coach your child, there's ways, there's grants, there's things out there. And this can take them far in life. I mean, college, mm-hmm. the Olympics. I mean, it, it really is a good, safe sport. Amen. And, I, and I've said it before, and it always sounds like, oh, yeah, sure. But the young people that I, who I've met in shooting – have all, and I mean all of them, have been exceptional, polite, well-mannered, focused people. But, and I think it's it's a proven thing that, you know, along with, they've got this tremendous sport, but it encourages their grades to to be higher, mm-hmm. too. I mean, mm-hmm. they are far more engaged in well, life. I, I think I've, I've shared it on the show here. I was talking to the folks at uh, some university where they have a shooting program, and they offer shooting scholarships. They say, well, we only offer half scholarships to shooters. And when I asked why, they said, well, because shooters can always get an academic scholarship. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. okay. <laughs> so they stretch out their scholarships because they know that all the shooters can also qualify for academic. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, that's, well, that's you know what it goes right back to what you were talking about, Michelle. It's that discipline. Mm-hmm. They, they study. They manage their time. They do what they got to do. Right. Very, very right. cool stuff. Um, go on there. <sighs> Get some so, education. Let's see. I'm trying to think of anything else we saw that was, we saw cool stuff. Uh, rain. We saw rain. A lot of rain. A lot of <laughs> lot of thunder. A lot of water washing over the roads. Water standing a foot deep on the range. Yeah, we're having fun now. Uh, snakes, let's see, snakes, oh, yeah. fire ants. Uh, Everything coming up out of the, uh, yeah, out of the bayou. <laughs> wanting, wanting the high ground. Yes, exactly. Good. <laughs> that was all just in the suburban. Yeah, so it's, but, but we had a good time. i tell you, this place, the uh, Boondocks, is really cool. It's, uh, I know uh, Rob Latham was talking about it a couple of weeks ago right. in the show, but it's 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 pretty nice. In Jackson, Mississippi, Boondocks. FTA, Firearms Training Academy. It's not a public range open to the public. It's more like a gun site training place where people go to train. But it's a beautiful facility. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Well, when we do our road trip, uh, Michelle, maybe we'll uh, we take gun talk on the road. Maybe that'll be a destination point. Well, you know, it's interesting. We were talking with Mark Hannish with uh, Ammo Inc. Mark was the guy who actually came up with the idea for the Scottsdale Gun Club. Oh. And uh, I think he said it was like a senior project or a graduate project when he was in uh, scholars or college, something like that. And it's one of those deals where people go, yeah, sure, you know, a high-end, you know, who's going to pay extra money to go to a shooting range? Of course, it became the prototype Premier, yeah. for the whole concept. It was the first gun club. Yep. Where people paid 
big money to go be a member of this very cool place with real high-end shooting facilities and even like babysitting services and all the rest of it. But we just had a friend over yesterday evening who said, you know, (laughs) trying to find a place to shoot locally that Mm -hmm. will let him shoot anything that he wants to, which is all completely legal. You don't have to have extra, you you know, um, I guess... um, stamps or anything like that to be able to do. I mean, he's he's just a regular old guy, 2217s, right. you know, 223308s and and he's like there's just nothing around here that is a I don't want to offend anybody. Just there's nothing ahead. around here that right. is premier or elite or a nice enough range that right. that would allow the distance or anything else. Right. That, Mm-hmm. To, to accomplish these tasks, and uh, it's one of those things. It's like, yeah, if you if you build it, they'll come. But it takes such financial it, well, strength to get takes, something like this going. It does. I mean, you say, okay, we're going to need ten million dollars to build this facility. Right. And that's not a crazy number. No, and then the liability. I mean, the insurance no, and everything else that comes along with it, it. It never gets inexpensive. And you know, if you are in a large enough population base, which is going to be the key issue there, mm-hmm. to be able to pull, because if you say, okay, this is going to appeal to one percent of the marketplace, well, then the marketplace has to be big enough to where one percent of that is enough, right? Right. And they say we're going to charge twice or three times what other shooting ranges charge. And it's going to be a membership, and it's going to be five thousand dollars to get in, and it's going to cost you a hundred dollars a month. And do you have enough people who will do that now? If you provide the cool enough place, it's like, yeah, people will pay that to belong to a country club mm-hmm. right? without even thinking about it. it if you said, yeah, we got a place where you can come shoot your machine guns and you can shoot your 50 cows and just, you can do all this other cool yeah. stuff. I was just going to say, you can't eliminate one aspect of our sport. You, right. you can't eliminate the, the sporting clays. You can't eliminate the plinking range. You, you know, it has yeah. to be so all-inclusive that, uh, yeah. You can just go from range to range to range. Mm-hmm. And that takes a lot of ground, and it takes a lot of people. It does. It's a, it's a lot mm-hmm. to, to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm still convinced that on a smaller scale, there's a model for doing indoor ranges in gun stores at some of these abandoned stores that are in shop, not in shopping malls, but, you know, where you got like standalone, mm-hmm. whether it's like a Kroger or a Circuit City or places where they've closed down and there's this building. It's got a parking lot. It's got electricity in there. And you basically go in and build a building inside of the building right. to do the shooting range. Now you've got sound insulation. You've got all the other structures that are already there. And you've got a decent retail location. I think I would love to see somebody come up with a model for this is how you do this. And this is the architectural plans and all the rest of that. I think that'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Agreed. So I'll get right you get on that. that in your spare time. Yeah. <laughs> Jim, you're not doing anything else. No, I'm still working on this uh, wind compensating bench vice. So. He's still trying to build his own range. Right? <laughs> you're kidding. Yeah. yeah. We hopefully have an update for you on that next week. Hoping. So, all right. So we got a vice and it's in a swivel thing, right? The, the <laughs> rifle's in there and then it's got this like wind flag on the back of it. And as the wind blows, it moves the muzzle off, off just the right amount. There's something there, but it's not very good. Yeah. So there you go. Or sane. Or sane, yes. Okay. Physics was not my thing. Inventions, okay. not my thing. Okay. Okay. So I think that okay pretty much uh, wraps it up. And Absolutely. That's his, that, that's his way of saying, all right, Tom, you have said more than enough at this point. <laughs> it's time for you to I said quiet. that at about 2.05 Eastern. And, oh. <laughs> He's lost in his sketch nice. drawings. Nice. <laughs> nice. All righty. Well, you guys have a lovely rest of your Mother's Day, and we will be doing this again next week. Uh, in the meantime, buy guns, buy ammo, uh, take people to the range. By the way, I mean, seriously, have you ever seen a better time to buy guns and ammo? Mm. Oh, right. Oh, my gosh. Yep. My, my buddy this morning sends me pictures of two more, his f- third and fourth P365s he bought. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This is a guy who's been to every class that gun sites, you know, holds and has, you know, safes full of 1911s. He says, you know, I don't think I'm going to carry my 1911 anymore. It's like he's whispering like he doesn't want anybody to hear. They're great. You know, you go, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm you, rock. This, this whole new class of the, the Glock, uh, what is it, the... G48. 48s and 43s. 43s. Uh, Everybody's got guns in this category, and you're going, this really, no kidding, is the sweet spot for Gary. And they're all good. And they're all good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. They're... 
you know, people say, well, they're not, they don't have the trigger pull of 1911. No, they don't. But they are more than good enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and all of them are within a financial reason. That's right. I mean, we're talking anywhere from four to $700 for mm-hmm. most of these, right? Mm-hmm. Depending on what you want. Yeah. Yeah. And, exactly. and they're obtainable and ammo is affordable right now. Right. Right. And then, you know, you, you can get any caliber you want, but I recommend a nine. Because if you want to buy ammo, mm-hmm. the price difference is enormous. Yep. Right. Yep. It just is. And you're not giving up anything on any other platforms. You just get the nine and don't worry about it anymore. Correct. Right. There you go. Okay. And maybe now we're done. Except there's one. No. Come on. <laughs> if I said okay again, could we go? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> okay. And we're out of here. You guys have a great week. Bye, Tom. See ya. Well, that wraps up another Gun Talk After Show. But if you want even more gun-related stuff, don't forget to check out Gun Dealio. It's the app for Apple and Android phones that connects you to all the Gun Talk shows, plus even more. And we'll catch you next time for the Gun Talk After Show. Mm-hmm.